Hi, I'm Hamish Black, and welcome to Writing on Games. During my time with Hellblade, I was forced to confront some very real things about myself. I would often find unnerving parallels to some of my own lived experiences. I've badly hurt myself in the past, I've pushed loved ones away as a result of my illness. Hell, I've been the guy to angrily shout into a mirror as if I were being attacked by a distant facsimile of myself. Now, These are all things I've since thankfully moved past, but reflecting on it all through Senoa's protracted anguish was tough. Especially given that, on a mechanical level, it's not particularly captivating. With that in mind, I can't call my time with Hellblade enjoyable. I don't want to play it again. Contrary to what you might believe the function of a game to be, it was most certainly not fun. But that doesn't matter. That is a good thing. See, what Hellblade is, is necessary. Like Mafia 2's critique of the American dream, or Spec Ops' deconstruction of the military shooter, Senua's story is further proof that the strength of games is in their ability to convey narrative through interactivity, and that sometimes the best stories come from dull mechanics. Hellblade, however, perhaps goes further with this idea than any game that I can remember flat out rejecting the notion of fun to bypass any ambiguity in the team's vision. This game wants you to know exactly what it's about, but isn't afraid to make you work to realise that. On a symbolic level, Hellblade toys with your expectations from the outset, at least partially framing itself as an action game replete with sword swinging and dodge rolling. It's also developed by Ninja Theory, known for their bombastic hack and slashers, which itself is a genre that typically rewards style and flow. I mean, it's also called Hellblade for God's sakes. You'd be hard pushed to find a more cartoonishly action game name if you tried. But no, instead what you get is a mediocre stop and start affair. The monotonous environment puzzles in which you walk around looking for symbols, feeling ruthlessly and jarringly segmented from the barebones combat, in which the only real escalation in difficulty comes from the number of enemies you must fight. And that's the game for 8 hours. There's no UI, no rewards for combat outside of making it through another fight, merely allowing you to wander further into Senua's torment. There's no player expression or progression here in the way that you might expect from other action games. On every level, the game removes your agency from a genre framework that usually seeks to maximise it, in place of a distinctly mundane series of encounters. All of this seems to fit though with the idea that for the vast majority of people, mental illness is mundane. It's a constant, numbing battle against yourself, at times feeling like every minor victory only gives way to more internal conflict. Eventually you deal with it so much, learn its signals that it becomes rote, never satisfying. Thoughts of pain and death become the norm, as a great scholar once said, it's every day bro. To accurately reflect that experience in a game then, that game cannot be truly fun in the traditional sense. To produce Hellblade in such a way would be to trivialise the very real conditions Ninja Theory was referencing when they consulted people living with this illness. But Hamish, mechanically engaging representations of mental health struggles can be achieved. Just look at Souls, that series still manages to be fun while also acting as a metaphor for depression. Well, sure, but the difference in my mind comes down to purpose. You can ignore the symbolic implications of hollowing in Dark Souls. What you cannot ignore is the mechanical narrative of Hellblade. It isn't trying to be a fun game that also happens to be about mental illness. It exists purely to tell a specific story of specific suffering. No, the beauty of Hellblade, where the game goes deeper than any representation of mental health issues I've seen previously, is that its mechanics aren't merely symbolic. In many ways, they are literal, symptomatic of Senua's condition. You see, the team could have just told a spooky story in which Senua sees and hears things, but as the creative designer himself describes, to do so would be to rely on low-hanging fruit to rest on the surface level understanding most have of psychosis. 
Instead, the team cements the tedium of your interactions, forcing you to face the realities of what this condition can do to people. See, those boring environment puzzles aren't there to break up the humdrum combat. They're representative of the fact that Senua's psychosis manifests itself in a kind of heightened apophenia, what psychiatrist Klaus Conrad described as the process of repetitively and monotonously experiencing abnormal meanings in the experiential field. Which is to say that, in very broad terms, Senua tends to recognise and attribute meaning to patterns where they don't exist, isolating herself through an increasingly paranoid and conspiratorial internal logic that only she experiences, importantly, rooted in the ordinary. In short, she suffers delusions, and while it might not make for enjoyable play, what better way to represent these symptoms than through protracted mechanics based solely on pattern recognition? Through constant repetition, you're forced to internalise enemy attack patterns in the same way you constantly seek naturally occurring runic shapes in the world. You see the puzzles as unnerving, as hiding some meaning you just can't quite figure out yet. You see the combat encounters as dangerous as you become fearful that you're going to lose hours of progress. Senua's delusions feel real to you because you're experiencing them with her. At the end of the day, however, that rune you found is just a coincidental arrangement of trees. All it ever does is open a door with seemingly no physical barrier to speak of. Waves of enemies appear out of thin air and only stop arbitrarily. Your progress will likely never be erased, there was never any objective danger. Senua's greatest enemy is herself, the peril you feel is largely of your own creation, beginning with a seed that germinates into immutable, ubiquitous paranoia. Such is the nature of Senua's psychosis, and indeed of the many others who also experience it. It can be as terrifying and potentially dangerous as it is ordinary and tedious. To create traditionally fun mechanics to represent that then would be disingenuous, it would be dissonant with the reality they are trying to portray. To dedicate themselves so wholly to this notion, however, the relatively small team at Ninja Theory clearly took a big risk. They could have created an action game rife with gripping combat and player expression and the like. They have proven themselves capable of that in the past. In going the other way, however, by refusing to cater to a demand for instant gratification that seems so prevalent in this industry, they were able to achieve something far more important. They told a genuine, heartfelt story about a widely misunderstood and misrepresented condition that while not enjoyable to physically play, will stick with me for a long time to come. So I hope you enjoyed my piece on Hellblade, if you did why not hit subscribe, click the little bell thingy, and check out the podcast in the description. If you feel like going the extra mile however, you can support the show directly via Patreon like these wonderful folks currently on screen. You are all directly responsible for keeping this show going, and I cannot thank you enough. In particular, I'd like to thank Mark B. Writing, Spike Jones, Vasily Hrebinka, Julian McGroth, Leonardo Paley, Samuel Pickens, Tom Nash, Shardfire, Philip Lange, Rob, Rusty Shackelford, Elsie Heinz, Camel Traffic, John Parks, Danny James, Mosh, Anna Pimentel, Gang Leader, Zach Casserly, Jesse Ryan, Brandon Robinson, Diego Fox Obuza, Justin's Holderness, James Doring, Biggie Smith, Peter, Artyom Vitsyuk, Christian Huneman, Nico Blakely, Nicholas Ross, and Charlie Yang. And with that, I'm Hamish Black, and this has been Writing on Games. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.